Okay, so from here starts your speaking test. This is the speaking mark test of the International English Language Testing System taking place in Ross IELTS Academy. The candidate is Arthur. The candidate number is 01613279. The examiner is Luisa Meinos, examiner number 443577. Good evening, my name is Luisa. Would you please tell me your full name? Hi, yeah, my name is Arthur Xavier Patrick Chanson. And can I see your identification, please? Yes, here it is. Okay, thank you so much. And then let's get started with part one. So in the first part of the exam, I will ask you some personal questions. First, I'd like to ask about studying. Do you work or study? Actually, I'm a student and I'm studying music composition for film. And I, I will do a postgraduate in London. What is the most interesting part of your major? Uh, composing. Um, it's a, a very great study because because it's my it's my passion. And when you compose, you you create something new, something you can't touch, but something uh, something which is beautiful because it's art. So I think it's a beautiful uh, part of my studies. What kinds of majors do people usually study in your country? What, what kind of studies? What kind of majors do people in your country usually study? Um, the, the subject, that's it? Yeah. Oh, um, I, but all my friends are musicians because I'm doing that uh, since my childhood. But I think a lot of people want to do um, psychology or write, so they, they study to, to become lawyers. Or, or I don't know, more, um, more hand, handy men can, can do other, other studies. Now let's move on to talk about languages. Can yes. learning languages be helpful for us? English, the, the most uh, useful, that's it. Yeah, in th I, I think in our current world, it's very important to speak English. It, it allows to, to communicate with everyone because everyone on, in the world speak a little bit English. So I think it's the most important language and, and the first I want to learn. Do you wish to learn a new language in the future? Yes, I want to learn Japanese. Uh, because uh, I, I love Japanese culture, I'm doing karate uh, for uh, maybe 15 years. So if I, I could learn a new language, it would be Japanese. Now let's move on to talk about smiles. What are the things that make you smile? M me smile? I can repeat uh, the question if you didn't yeah, understand. Please. What are yes, the please. things that make you smile? I don't know this word. Uh, what do you mean by, by smile? Smile is like when you're smiling at oh, somebody. Oh, just smile. Yes. Okay, <laughs> okay, yes. Um, so uh, when I do my hobbies or when I, when I spend, st spend time with my, with my friends, but uh, I would say... I would say music or when I play piano, when I sing or when I do karate, uh, because that's my hobbies and and it permits me to to express myself in different way, way different ways. So uh, I would say playing music or doing karate. Do you like to smile while posing for photos? Yeah, yes, I, I like to smile, but I also um, like take photo when I'm more serious to have a, a mysterious uh, side. I don't know. All right, thank you so much. That's it for part one now. So that means we're moving on to part two. So in part two, I'm going to give you a card with a topic, and I'd like you to talk about that for two minutes. Before you start, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say, and you can make notes if you wish. Do you understand? Okay, yes. All right, here we go. Can you see the cue card right now? Yeah, you can see it? Yes. All right, yeah, you should I... describe a big company in your hometown that employs a lot of people. 
and your one minute of preparation starts right now. Oh, OK. All right, so your one minute is up. You may start speaking now. OK, so in my 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 town is uh, in France is Toulouse in the south, and we have a very important company here. It's Airbus, who uh, we uh, it's a company which make planes and um, it's very important, important sector here. The the planes um, we have a, a big airport where we we make planes. Uh, so in Toulouse there is a lot of engineers, engineers, and also a high school to become um, um, airport engineers. We we have uh, also a lot of flight attendants. So I think it's uh, on the one hand an advantage because there is not a lot of things in Toulouse. Uh, we are in the south and Paris is in the north. So I think it's an advantage for that. It it allows to 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 have people here who work who who work. But it's on the other hand, other hand it's also a disadvantage because because planes are uh, one of the causes of the global warming and we have a responsibility in that if we make if we make uh, planes, I guess. So that's it. Uh, I can also speak about talk about. Oh, <laughs> okay. It's a uh, faster than I I was uh, imagine. Do you maybe know somebody who works there? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, when I was uh, at school, when I was young, I had uh, friends, and I learned. I learned recently that uh, they currently make studies to become to become uh, engineers in this sector. OK, thank you so much. That's your two minutes now. That's it for part two. So now moving on to part three. So okay. you've been talking about a big company in your hometown that employs a lot of people. And now I'd like to ask you some questions that are related to this. OK, what is the benefit of working in large companies? So first, it permits to have a lot of rights, um, like like uh, for holidays. Uh, it's also sure you you know that you will not be fired. Fired. Um, also, I don't know. Um, it permits to to have a great job uh, next to your home. You don't have to to go far away your home to to work, but there is also disadvantages, like if you work for somebody else, you you can't choose your holidays when you work. Uh, it's harder to to improve uh, your your job to improve yourself because you you are not free. I guess that's it. Do you think the work environment or work culture plays an important role at a company? Yes, I think so. Uh, there is a lot of old company with old systems, and I I think it's not the the great uh, system for people. Uh, there is also new company like startups or or work where where you work together with more with more. 
uh, free time. You can choose when you uh, where you choose. Uh, sorry, where you work and when you work. So because you choose, I think you you can work better with more energy uh, because you really want to. Has technology become necessary for workplaces today? Yes, I think so because uh, um, today everything is working with internet. Without internet, uh, our society uh, can live a collapse. So I think it's important today to have technology, computers, cell phones to stay to stay in touch with with uh, our friends, uh, not just our friends, with our colleagues. Or I, I don't think uh, today you can work without technology. What do you think will be the future of technology at the workplace? I think we we have to make technology which permits us to uh, technology which help us to work, and I hope technology will not replace us because uh, technology don't need uh, some rest, don't need holidays. So I hope technology will help us and not to re replace us, us. So would you say there's also a downside to having a lot of technology at the workplace? Yeah, I think uh, on the one hand, it get, allows us to, to work better and easier, but on the other hand, it, it we we just have to see um, uh, science fiction like Matrix to imagine a bad future where technology is uh, attack us, for example. Okay, thank you so much. This is the end of the speaking test now. Speaking course. This course is made up of five offline speaking videos in which you will learn all the necessary tips and techniques to take the IELTS speaking test with a high score. Tell me about your family. Do you like In addition to that, you will have access to useful grammar and vocabulary resources. Once you finish your course, you will have one online mock test of speaking along with comprehensive feedback under the same exam conditions. Interesting. Christian, a very Join us to become our next successful candidate. All right, so let's see how you did today. Um, all right, so I, at first I want to get started with some feedback on parts one, two, and three, and I talk a little bit about the requirements there, and then we'll move on to your four IELTS criteria. In the end, you'll get a total score for a test today. All right. So part one, as I mentioned in the beginning, is about personal questions. This is the, um, the part where you have short questions and short answers, right? So about three sentences is totally fine here. I'd say the length of your answers was fine. Um, no need to, do, to go into too much detail. You can save that for okay. parts two and three. Okay. Part two then, all about talking at a length. It is very important here that you cover your full two minutes. And I noticed that you already tried. Uh, you just kind of struggled a little bit in the middle there, right? I think it was about a minute and 30 or 40 seconds. So oh, there was okay. a bit left, but I can give you a few tips and tricks on how to do that. Maybe you can figure out if you can work with this. All right, and then part three is all about longer coherent answers. This is where you can develop your topic a bit more. I think you did actually pretty well, right? You gave me some more information than you did, for example, in part one. Um, so I'd say in part three, you did very well. All right, so that was it very quickly about your three parts, but now we're get to the um, good stuff, right? The four IELTS criteria, your fluency and coherence, lexical resource, grammatic range and accuracy, and your pronunciation. Um, let me get started by saying, I think you can try to relax a little bit more because you seem to be putting a lot of pressure on yourself and that got you to, to, to speaking very fast. Yes. And um, I mean, I, I, I know that might be, uh, you know, in your mother tongue that you're talking very fast, but I yes. would say in English, in your IELTS, you can try to slow down a little bit, right? Maybe okay. force, maybe force yourself a little bit, of course, when you're stressed and everything that mm. is totally normal that people tend to talk faster. I do the same, um, but, you know, maybe you can before you take your own test, try to, you know, remind yourself of 
slowing a bit down. All right, cool. Now let's get into your fluency and coherence. I'd say overall you had some very good answers. You know, you had some good ideas, especially in part two, for example, for the first part, you had a very nice coherent and fluent answer, right? You had a good structure. That's a, a very good step, right? Because you, of course, you need a good clear structure to create coherence in your answer. So always keep that in mind, especially when you're taking your bullet points, right? Always be very clear about what you want to say and keep the structure in there, right? Um, okay. Other than that, um, of course, you know, your answer was a little bit too short. That's why I asked you again. Uh. So what you can do in these instances, different things, uh, you know, something that you can try out maybe. You can either give more examples. So, okay. for example, maybe you can think about another company, right? So you can say, okay, that's it, Airbus, you know, um, but we have this other company, whatever it is, you know, or you can say, or we have a big university in our city that also employs a lot of people. It's not necessarily a company, but, you know, or talk about that. Or give an example of somebody who works there. Or think about a story, I don't know, what happened to the company during COVID or something like this, right? Mm. So giving examples and details always helps you to keep going for a longer time because there is more that you can talk about than what you would do if you keep it general, right? Also goes for part three, right? Because there are a lot of general questions. For example, I don't know, there could be something like, what is the work, work culture like in your country? You know, there are a million ways to go with that. It's always good to go into a detailed answer with examples to keep you going. And another thing that I don't know, if, um, you know, maybe you can try that out just once or twice um, before your test, go off topic, right? So um, that means that, especially in part two, that's a good thing because you have a lot of time to talk. And of course, you have some topics that you're more comfortable with than others. And mm. maybe you can find somehow that they're related, right? So for example, after having talked about that one company, you go on and say, oh, you know what? We actually have, I don't know, like, as I said, a university. And there are a lot of people who are employed there and actually also people who play music or whatever. And then you go mm. on and talk okay. about music, right? So of mm. course, you need this, you need you know a connection somehow but you can create that yourself and that means okay. going off topic and then maybe in the end you end up at a totally different topic than what the question was about but as long as it makes sense how you got there that's totally fine right so you can you know just think about maybe there are some topics that you are more confident about or that you feel more comfortable with for example part two you seem to be very confident about of course because it's your passion, you say your music, right? So if that's maybe something that you feel better about, try to kind of direct the topic into that direction. Okay, right? okay, that's true, but that's, thank you. you know, something that you can try out, maybe you can think about something, of course, forcing it is, is another thing, right? But it's just something to, to try out. Okay, okay. great. That was all okay, I was talking you. about your topic. Um, another thing for your fluency and coherence, that is important here are your connective discourse markers. So you use some nice one things like on one hand, on the other, actually, I think, I guess, first of all, and so on, right? Um, I think you kind of have a little bit of wider range here. You probably know some more, you know, of your linking words and things like this, things like uh, moreover or um, however instead of but, or just bring in some more variation that could always be helpful. Uh, I am pretty sure that you know a lot of these words that you have yes, them in the past. We, I know. Oh yeah, you know. but with the stress, uh, I yeah. forgot everything. But furthermore, moreover. Um, exactly. Yeah, that's however, exactly what yeah. I'm talking about, right? So, you know, just try to remind yourself of that. And, you know, I already mentioned that, but I think uh, by slowing down, you can actually reduce some of your hesitation. Mm. And also for part two, as you're slower, you can stretch your answer over a longer time, right? Because it takes yes. a little longer to get to the end, right? So of course, you know, sometimes that happens, but I think you now have a good idea of what you can do, right? All right, so a lot of talk about your fluency and coherence. Because of your, your hesitations here and there and your answer was too short and so on, I gave you a six here, but I am pretty sure that you 
HUD get a higher score? Okay. Uh, 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 what? A six? A six for your fluency and coherence. Just for that one. Okay, question. for my. Just for yeah. the. Okay. For, just for the one. We'll move on to the next one. Now, <laughs> on to your lexical resource. Okay, so I actually, I would say you have a very good range of vocabulary that you know how to use comfortably. And that's the kind of buzzword here, right? Because your vocabulary should always be natural and comfortable, and you should not try to force any idioms or expressions in there. You had some very nice collocations that you used in a natural way, so that was great. Things like, it is my passion to express myself through music or stay in touch um, with somebody, right? So these were wait. great. I think what you can maybe do is you probably know some more collocations or idioms, right? That you could try to work into your answers that would boost your overall vocabulary, right? Because that would show okay. that you have a comfortable use of these idiomatic expressions in there, um, right? So maybe you can think of a few and uh, try to keep them in the back of your head and maybe you'll find an opportunity to work that into your answer. Um, another thing for a lexical resource is your paraphrasing. So, you know, finding synonyms for your words. I'd say you're actually pretty well here. Um, for example, use advantage and benefit, or you try to vary the word to allow, and that was good. Mm. Uh, in other instances where you were kind of stumbling or where you were hesitating, you were repeating a few of your words. But, you know, this is where you can see that they're just, you know, closely related, these criteria. Oh, okay. So, you know, um, I think if you can figure out to reduce your hesitations a little bit, that will also benefit your vocabulary. For now, I gave you a six here. Um, I would say, you know, more idioms and collocations could really help your score here. Okay. All right. Now, moving on to your grammar and accuracy. I would say yeah. you actually have very good grammar, right? You had some, had a <laughs> You look surprised. <laughs> oh, um, yes, I am. <laughs> uh, no, you actually did have a good range of complex structures, you know, such as you had some conditional clauses or relative clauses. You had different kinds of tenses, and that was very nice because in your grammar, it's all about the uh, range of complexity, I'd say, right? So okay. using as many of these structures as you can, maybe you can thr throw in even more of these. If you can, you know, of course, always try to Keep the balance between hesitating because you want to have a complex structure and going with the flow. Um, but overall, that was very nicely done. As for your tenses, I would say most of them were correct. Just here and there, you kind of um, your complex tenses were a little bit off. For example, you said, "I'm doing that since my childhood. I have been doing that since my childhood." Uh, right? mm -hmm. um, for since and for, you always say "have been doing something." Um, okay. So I'd say, you know, overall, you, a few of your tenses were a little off. Um, past and present tense, always keep an eye on the tense that you were using. Don't mix them up, right? <laughs> Same thing, just as a general tip, always listen very closely to the tense of the question that you were asked and stick to that. Um, okay. Then I just have two little things. Sometimes you're forgetting about your uh, third person S. For example, you say everyone speak, everyone speak. Right? because it's present. Uh -huh. yes. Oh, yes. Same thing goes for your plural S. Sometimes that's missing. For example, you said uh, plain, plain R causes. When you use the you know, verb in plural, you have to say planes with an S. Oh, okay. And another one with your plural, you said there is new company. They are new companies, right? Oh, okay. Yes. So always be sure to, you know, stick to that. For, uh, yeah. Or less. And I speak this, too fast. Yes, I, that's see, that's why I think some of these mistakes could be avoided when you take, give yourself a bit more time, right? But don't stress yourself over your speed now, right? Because of, it's always that interplay of everything together, right? So that's that's totally fine. Um, I think you still did, did very good here. I gave you a seven in your uh, grammar and accuracy. And now on to your pronunciation. I think you sound very natural and conversational, so you have a good intonation, and you also use your voice to put emphasis on things, right? So that's very nice, uh, you know, very nice use of your your words and your pronunciation to kind of, you know, emphasize what you want to say. And that's very good, right? Because it's all about this natural melody in your voice. 
Um, you know, so I'd say you did very well here. Um, maybe in some instances where you were hesitating a little bit, that dropped a bit, but overall you still did very good. So I gave you a seven in your pronunciation as well. That means that you got an overall 6.5 for today. Whoa, okay. Yeah, so I am pretty confident that you can get your desired score. Of course, I cannot predict the future. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow, if you know the topic and yeah, so on, of right? Course. But I do think that you have what it takes to get a very good score in your IELTS. And um, yeah, all right. Um, that was, I know that was a lot of information, but do you have any yeah. questions now? No, I, I will uh, listen the the recording after. And uh, thank you very much. It, it was great, and uh, I, I can go to my exam more, uh, more. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, sure. I will try to breath and uh, and um, sir. Uh, thank you, thank you. That's very great. You're very welcome. No problem at all. I think practicing the situation itself is always helpful, right? Because yeah. maybe that can calm you down already a little bit. All yes, right. Yes, I'm cool. already. Perfect. Thank so you. what did you think of this test overall? Was it useful for you? Oh, uh, stressful, yes. And, and not because it's a mock exam, uh, just because I speak with a native uh, speaker. So so I, I don't do that uh, every day. Uh, I was in Montreal uh, uh, last year. So uh, I spoke sometimes, but it was in bar. I, I didn't uh, speak in a, in a serious context like that. So... Yeah. So uh, that's it. But uh, but yeah, I realized that uh, in my in my native uh, language, I speak fast, and yeah. in English, I speak that fast. But with the stress, I I speak, uh, 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 yeah. So I totally tomorrow, I, I will okay. Uh, uh, I will um I will speak slowly to yeah. to think and to use uh to use um, linking words and have a, a better co coherence of. Uh, Okay, okay, that that sounds great. That sounds like a very good idea. All right, uh, last question then. Would it be okay for you if we share this video on our YouTube channel? Yes, of course. Okay, thank you so much. All right, then that's it for today. Best of luck to you thank with you. your test tomorrow. All the best and have a good rest of your day. <laughs> thank right. you. Have a good day. Right. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.